see that a manufactured cost of this actually makes a difference to your investment. Esther, is the feeling that you're going to take my advice and stick two fingers up with my money and walk somewhere else? That's going to put off the customer straight away as soon as you walk in the door. Well, I don't really yeah, mind, to be honest. David, the point is, I couldn't work with you. That's not a problem That's for me. That's the point. You want to talk turkey? No. No, no deal. Absolutely. I'm out. Number five, refusing to answer questions. Eddie's product was called the Chill Chaser. It was an electronic heater that was in stark contrast with the gas heaters, which were what many people used. These new heaters were electrical, more environmentally friendly, and had sensors that detected activity so that they can turn on and off based on this. They also had features like lighting and LED screens to place branding or advertisement on. Hello, Dragons. My name is Eddie Middleton. I'm director and owner of a product design and manufacturing company, Westhawk, funding of £255,000 for a 15% stake in my company. And for commercial and domestic heating has increased significantly all over the world. We need a new environmentally friendly solution to the problem. We're my friend Zeus. Heat and light launched last year, 2008. Homebase ordered more than 2,000 pieces over the first six months, which will not only heat you, but will entertain and advertise at the same time. Middleton definitely had one of the more useful inventions in the den. He was looking for an investment of 225,000 pounds for a 15% equity. Even though Peter Jones was impressed by the futuristic heater, he and his fellow dragons were not happy with his arrogant and dismissive behavior of Eddie had. Eddie refused to answer questions and questioned the importance of the questions the dragons asked him. All fans of Dragon's Den will be familiar with the teeth sucking and head shaking that begins when the presenter stumbles on the salient facts and figures. It is the easiest way to lose any potential investment in Dragon's Den. Theopophytus labeled Eddie as rude, arrogant, and insulting. In the end, he refused Peter Jones's offer and James Conn withdrew his. Eddie walked away from the den with nothing. What do they sell? What's their sale price? 299. What did it cost you? Uh, at that time, it was costing me uh, 100. And... To be honest, I would rather not speak about the prices because this is very sensitive information because the buyers can appreciate that not to jeopardize my company going forward, further that information remains. I'll, tell you, what I, I'll tell you where I am, Eddie. Assess this as a business because you refuse to tell me what it costs to manufacture these or have them delivered to Great Britain. You see that a manufactured cost of this actually makes a difference to your investment. Esther, is the feeling that you're going to take my advice and stick two fingers up with my money and walk somewhere else. But actually, I think that that is arrogant. You want £255,000 asking simple questions. And if you don't open up and build a rapport and a relationship, nobody is going to invest in you. I'm happy to answer any question you like. Later on, the Dragon's Den survivor revealed he has no regrets about rejecting a £225,000 offer from the Telly Tycoons. Middleton turned down Peter Jones and James Conn's bid for a 48% share of his eco-friendly patio heater company. Since slaying the Dragons, within a month, 45-year-old Eddie sold 1,000 heaters worth £500,000. Number four, too abrasive for the Dragons. This is quite insulting as the Dragons are successful multi-millionaires who are self-made and did not just gain their millions from inheritance or from winning the lottery. The product David was trying to promote was the It's a Beach Towel. It was a modified beach towel with multiple pockets for your belongings that could transform into a beach bag. We are here today to ask you for £250,000. The product we're going to show you today is called an Itza. It's a multi-functional sun lounger towel that converts into a beach bag. We have six pockets. Notice that from the MP3 player pocket, we have loops. Theopophytus mentioned that he sold a product similar to the Itza almost a decade ago. David threatened to sue Theo if he tried to copy the Itza. David's arrogance alienated him from the dragons and prevented him from gaining an investment. Contrary to popular belief, waffling and jargon in presentations or any other kind of business communication does not a clever person make. Big words, cliches, and technical talk are about as welcome in business presentations as swearing and rude jokes. Your audience is not attending your talk for a demonstration in linguistic yoga. They want a clear, succinct, and understandable pitch that they can visualize and relate to. The quicker you get to the point, the better, but it seemed more like David was giving the dragons a runaround. To make matters worse, David was asking for £250,000 in return for a 20% stake in a company that was only several weeks old. I will challenge it, and I will challenge you if you want to bring one out to copy me, because I'll take you to court. I won't think twice about it. I was there before you. No, no, it doesn't matter. 
Doesn't yeah, matter. It's not quite We're saying the if you put the pockets on the it's side. Saying. I think you're making a mistake. Is, is, is just trying to do too much too early. I wouldn't go and spend huge amounts of money until you prove that it can be sold to the cruise ships. When you do, you've got a valuable company. David, the point is, I couldn't work with you. That's not a problem That's for me. That's the point. I don't have to, because I'd run the business and I'd consult yeah. you. And if you achieve... You're going to give fine. me advice, aren't you? I'm out. I think people would buy it. The question comes down to how many would they buy that you would sell the volume that you expect. And that's the only reason why I'm... Jimmy, I don't understand it. Um, so I don't invest in things I don't understand. This was a huge valuation for such a young company. While David and his wife Sarah's presentation had a good start, David was simply too abrasive to endear himself to the Dragons. Number three, too much attitude. When Martin and Susie Cowley show up in the den, you can notice Theopophytus looking exasperated. He knew what was coming. Martin and Susie looked like people attending a rock concert and not people doing a business presentation. Martin looked like a giant rooster with a stained shirt. Susie looked like a rocker chick with her garb and her pink-colored hair. They were looking for 100,000 pounds in return for 30% of Cowley's fine foods. While the dragons were trying to give the couple advice to improve their image and make it more businesslike, the couple did not want to listen. They found nothing wrong with their look. And we are Cowley's fine foods. It's a range of beef jerkies, biltongs, all homemade, all home produced, with no additives or E numbers at all. And the reason we're here today is to ask you for £100,000, and we're offering 30% of our business. A solid customer base in the reenactment circles, also at musical festivals. We produce all this in a room 10 foot by 10 foot. The couple also did not have any idea about their figures, so they summoned John, their advocate. John likewise struggled, and Peter Jones reprimanded him for doing such a poor job. The business owners lost the goodwill of the dragons way too quickly. It was doomed because of their attitude and the fact that the numbers simply didn't line up. If you don't have a good grasp of the numbers that underpin your business or idea in your presentation, you will lose credibility with your audience. Yeah, but um, I don't think that when they went around trying to sell the product to supermarkets, to health clubs, to anywhere else, they dressed in the ridiculous fashion that you dress. That's going to put off, a product, that's not my put off the customer straight away as soon as you walk in the door. No, I don't really yeah, mind, to be honest. Employing a salesman because of his sort of image and look, he might need to have a, a more conventional... Martin, product. believe me, if you came to my premises to sell your product, you wouldn't get through the door. OK. OK? No, I'm not the only one who would tell you that. Make an investment. So, sadly, afraid I'm out. Don't like the way you presented today, John's uh, business acumen so far. I don't like your business plan, so that's the reason why I won't be investing this time. Right. That's okay. Those numbers are the essence of your business. Even if your overall story is riveting, if your entire offering comes across as a work of fiction, you won't get the audience response you're looking for. In the end, the couple and their advocate failed to impress the dragons with their attitude and unwillingness to listen. Number two, most disliked interaction. This presentation is more remembered for Rory McPhee's enthusiasm for getting Fiona Houston her seaweed than for Fiona's people skills or presentation skills. Fiona was trying to secure an investment for her company, Mara. Mara specialized in using seaweed as flavoring for food. She was asking for 100,000 pounds for 3% of her company. This valued her company at approximately 3.3 million pounds. She projected that Mara would become a £7 million brand. Whenever you go into the den, expect a reasonable amount of scrutiny. After all, the five dragons on the show did not get rich by making foolish business decisions. You have to know your numbers as well as be able to answer their questions. Seaweed is forgotten superfood into beautiful premium seasonings. Uh, I'm here to ask you for £100,000 for 3% of our business. We are two-thirds of the way Fiona did not gain any favors by being so defensive whenever a dragon asked her a question. Peter Jones tried to scrutinize the profitability of Mara, but Fiona did not even know what gross profit was. She appeared irritated at Peter's attempts to question her. It turns out that Mara had a 200,000-pound turnover and they had no profits. They were, however, set to break even that year. Deborah Meaden was clearly pissed at Fiona's poor attitude and reprimanded her. Even Sarah Willingham, who was a seaweed advocate, did not view Fiona in a positive light. How did you raise £350,000? Do you mean how did I raise it? Present Are you really business? saying that to me? No, well, it's just, can I, I've got a question for you. Did you come in here looking for a fight? No, not at all. Because I've got to tell you, your approach is just, for me, completely alienating. Peter, I think you've been extremely patient and helpful. 
Because I've got to tell you, if you'd done that to me... See what somebody, I'm like. You can ask the people I work with. Well, I can't, can I? Well, I work with Rory. I can't, I can't rewind. I can't rewind. No, you <laughs> can't. This far. No, I won't, be, I won't be investing piano. I'm out. You've come in and no matter what we ask you, you're so defensive. But it's impossible to invest. I'm so sorry. Fiona was so unlikable that she left the den with no investment despite having a good product. Peter Jones even said that his interaction with Fiona was one of his worst experiences in the den in 10 years. Number one, unfairly arrogant. Steve Mallett is the marketing director of Envelope, a collapsible fold-away box company. He was asking for 150,000 pounds for 10%, which values the company at 1.5 million pounds. For a relatively new company with just one product and no sales or orders, this is an insane valuation. Steve Mallett talked a big game despite owning 0% of the company. He then brings in his friend Steve Kappen, the inventor of the collapsible box. They then explain that they have talks with the Brighton City Council to roll out these boxes in lieu of wheelie bins. As the dragons drop one by one, Steve Kappen stands arrogantly as if he does not care. <laughs> we have no sales as we speak at the moment. We have the projected one through the council, that is the first one. Doesn't sound very convincing to me. Sounds like a prospect, but it's nowhere close. It without sale. You want to talk turkey? No, no, no deal. Absolutely. I'm out. Fine. It's called the envelope. Well, it doesn't envelop me with any confidence whatsoever. So I'm out. That order, forty to fifty percent. And obviously, I, correct me if I'm wrong. You're not interested. Absolutely not. That's not absolutely not. In no no that case, with great regret, I wish you good luck. But I'm out. The dragons need them more than they need the dragons. They eventually run out of dragons and are evicted from the den. Evan Davis, the presenter of the show, interviews Steve Kappen and Steve Mallett after he exits the den on their unwillingness to negotiate. Steve Kappen arrogantly said they would have negotiated up and not down. Steve Mallett says that they already had a fixed valuation before they came into the den. Kappen then says that if the dragons could not see the value of their proposition, then they wouldn't want them to be in the company anyway. That's all for today's video. We'll see you next time.